Hey, it's your friend Choice CJ here, and I am finally bringing you guys my semifinals match for the UBC season number five. We are going up against Vepsis, coach of the Helsinki Hydragons. He is a returning coach. He battled a little bit in UBC season three, and then has returned for season five, and has obviously done very well. And uh, he's now in the semifinals along with me. A uh, very good battler, does very well in March Madness type tournaments, you know, that are run by MPL. So I recommend you guys check him out. His team is Zapdos, Weavile, Nidoqueen, Cobalion, Florges, Celebi, Arcanine, Latios, uh, Blastoise, Mega Blastoise that is, and uh, Munchlax. Um, I did just record this once already, but the battle and uh, everything was very long, so I'm going to try once again to, but to do it more quickly this time. Uh, let's just hop right on into the team. So I do have a Fizz Def Blastoise, Scald, Flash Cannon, Rapid Spin, Toxic. Uh, Ice or uh, Ice Beam was supposed to be on here instead of Flash Cannon. Uh, I added Toxic at last minute. I wanted to add it instead of Flash Cannon, but I accidentally deleted Ice Beam instead. Uh, so that's a little bit of a bummer. Um, I did put a lot of speed on this thing, enough speed for zero speed Zapdos, which is why the Ice Beam would be nice. Um, but it is what it is. But uh, anyway, the reason I built this Fizz Def was to deal with Pokemon like Weavile, Arcanine, and Cobalion relatively well. You know, most of the fact that it's bulky allows me to pivot in on things that could be annoying, like Nidoqueen if I need. Um, so that's the last toys this week. We have an Assault Vest Steelix, Dragon Tail, Heavy Swim, Earthquake, Ice Fang. This is my switch into stuff like Latios, Florges, um, switches in pretty nicely on Zapdos, uh, Celebi as well if we need. I think the Spadef here uh, is enough to live two Surfs from Lati, depending upon what item it's holding. I don't remember exactly. Uh, then we just put the rest into attack and made it inanimate nature. We have a Assault Fist Gudra with a physical moveset, Aqua Tail, Fire Punch, Iron Tail, and Outrage. Um, I kind of regret this set. I don't have something here that hits Zapdos very hard. Um, and same for Blastoise. Like, I don't have super effective moves for those. Uh, like, it's true that Outrage hits both of those pretty hard. Um, but, you know, I, if I can help it, I don't want to lock myself into... Um, I don't want to lock myself into Outrage, um, especially if he has something like Florges on the team. That would be pretty bad. Um, so that's the that's the Gudra, mostly there for, for Zapdos, Celebi, Nidoqueen, uh, some variants of Arcanine, like if they're not packing close combat or something like that, Gudra can do a pretty good job of, of dealing with it. Um, we have a Culberberry Victini, Taunt, U-Turn, Blue Flare, Psy Shock, Culberberry, so I don't get Pursuit Trapped by Weavile if this thing gets a kill. Taunt because I was a little afraid of stuff like Call Mine Celebi potentially. Or not Call Mine Celebi. Uh, I mean, yes, I was concerned about that. But um, mostly, like for Florges, I wanted to be able to taunt that thing. And then I pack, pack Psy Shock so that way I could do a little bit better damage to something that, like Florges, that has some boosts, like Psychic. Obviously, if he has Spadef boost, it's not going to be very good for me. Um, so, yeah, that's the reason that we have this set this week. Uh, max speed to speed tie with Zapdos and Celebi. Uh, we have a Rock Polish Lando T uh, with our Edgequake coverage and also Stealth Rock. Stealth Rock is going to be really important in this match if you bring stuff like Arcanine, Zapdos, Weavile, um, which I'm you know I'm expecting Weavile for sure. Arcanine makes a lot of sense as a good response to Victini and Sylveon, and then uh, Zapdos is a, just a general nuisance for my team, which is why I have both uh, Steelix and Gudra to try and deal with it, and uh, it could potentially be his response to Lando, which is good to know. Um, but yeah, I originally had Ground DMZ on here, or uh, it might have been Rock DMZ, I don't remember exactly. But I put Yachi Berry instead, because Yachi Berry, like, uh, if I had just the Z Crystal and I got up a Rock Polish, obviously I can't win as long as Weavile's on the board, because it should have Ice, uh, ice Shard. But uh, with Yachi Berry, depending upon the range of HP that I'm at, I should be able to survive an Ice Shard. Um, so that makes uh, Lando a potential late game win con. And then we do have just a sort of standard Weavile, Knockoff Pursuit, Ice Crash, Low Kick, Pursuit to Pursuit Trap, uh, stuff like Celebi and uh, Latios especially. If Latios gets Pursuit Trapped, that could potentially clear the way for Victini. Um, he doesn't have any uh, way to resist both of my stabs if the Lottie is dead. Um, and I wanted to put Poison Jab on here, but I took it off for Low Kick. Low Kick hits Cobalion pretty hard, um, and then Floor just gets hit pretty hard anyway by Icicle Crash. So. That's kind of the, the thought behind this, and that is the team. So let us quickly just swap on over to the battle. And uh, as you can see, Vepsis has brought Nidoqueen, Arcanine, Zapdos, Blastoise, 
uh, Weavile, and um, what's this thing? Celebi. <laughs> so he didn't bring some of the threats that I was expecting, like the Lottie and the Florges, in terms of like setup options. I was also kind of afraid of Munchlax, as weird as that sounds. Like I don't have any Fighting Stab on this team, uh, but I do at least have the Taunt on Victini, like I had mentioned, and I do have uh, Dragon Tail on Steelix. Um, it's funny, if he didn't bring the Arcanine, he could have actually brought the Munchlax as a very good response to Victini, because it does have Thick Fat, obviously. So, uh, anyway, the fact that he didn't bring that sort of confirms to me that Arcanine is going to be uh, the Victini check. Um, otherwise, uh, like, Lando's looking pretty threatening. It just depends on what uh, what uh, exact moves he brought uh, on on each on each uh, each Pokemon, what items he's brought. Like, he, maybe he has a Yachi Berry on Nidoqueen. Oh, sorry, uh, like a uh, Shooka Berry on Nidoqueen to deal with Lando a little bit. Uh, Celebi can also be a decent response, but it would have to be packing Copa Berry to deal with Supersonic Sky Strike sets. And um, if I can whittle down the Arcanine and the Blastoise, I should be in a position to win both my Weavile. My Weavile is max speed, so it should have worse speed tie with his Weavile. And um, again, depending upon berries and stuff, I can one-shot Nidoqueen. Celebi and Zapdos. So yeah, I just need to get Chip on, on the Arcanine and Blastoise. Um, getting up rocks will be very crucial to helping to do that. Um, so that's going to be my, my game plan here. For leads, uh, Gudra matches up fairly well versus five of the six members of the team. It just only matches up really poorly versus Weavile, and uh, it could potentially match up poorly versus some variants of Nidoqueen and Arcanine. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and do that, as he does unfortunately lead the Weavile. Um, so that's pretty bad. Uh, Blastoise is my main response to this, but I'm not Mega Evolved yet. And um, for that reason, I'm going to go into Steelix instead. Uh, because without stuff like the Lottie and the Florges on the opposing side, Steelix can be used uh, more as a Weavile check if I need. Um, and he doubles into his Zapdos. So this actually is not uh, horrible for me, because there's not a whole lot that Zapdos can do to threaten. Um, and it's not even clear that he has Heat Wave, because he might have clicked it there. Um, but I do go for Ice Fang as he brings in his Blastoise, and I don't have a lot of switch-ins for this. And so I go into my Gudra, you know, it's my main response. It, it, you know, it's a Salt Fest, it's not going to take a lot of damage from any move he goes for. The only bad thing would be if he gets a Scald Burn, and he does fire off that Scald, we take minimal damage, but we do get burned. Um, so, I understand, you know, Scald, it's, uh, you know, it's bound to get burned, so, like, that's the reason that it's used. Uh, but it doesn't make it any less unfortunate. So my Gudra is a lot weaker than it otherwise would be. And in this matchup, actually, he has no Dragon Resist, so spamming Outrage could be very good uh, in this matchup. Um, but I do make a double into my Victini. Um, I'm not sure what I was uh, expecting there. I guess I was expecting uh, something like his Celebi as a response to uh, Gudra. I'm not really sure. Um, but I do make the play into into Victini. Um, and, you know, this made a lot of sense too if he was expecting something like Power Whip or Thunderbolt. Um, so yeah, I think that this play makes sense on my end. And I'm expecting his switch out, so I do go for a U-turn. But it actually, turns out he has Tangaberry. Um, so Tangaberry, I don't think it was here for Vict for Victini's U-turn. I think it was more here for Landorus's U-turn. Um, you know, because that makes a lot more sense to me. Because um, I think a blue flare would have straight up okoed this Celebi if I had clicked it. Um, but you know, I was expecting his Arcanine switch in, or potentially the Blastoise. Although Blastoise makes more sense as a uh, Weavile switch in. Um, but I, I digress. Um, so I do go for the U-turn. He survives easily, and I am going to go into my Gudra. Um, because I don't know what kind of move he's going to click. A nice play on my end might have been going into Weavile, because then I could Pursuit Trap it. But uh, Gudra, you know, it's not threatened by anything that this uh, Selby goes for. Just the only problem is, obviously, I can't threaten it much in return because I am burned. <laughs> um, so I think I just go for Fire Punch here. He goes for Psychic. So he at least has Rocks and Psychic. And uh, I do get a little bit of uh, Revenge Hacks. I get a crit and, and a burn, uh, which is nice. Um, but, of course, he has the option to go for Recover, uh, which he does do right now. And uh, hopefully you guys can hear my cat meandering into my room <laughs> as uh, I'm recording this. Um, but we're just going to kind of sit in here, and unfortunately, just Gudra can't do anything right now. Um, I wouldn't hate it if we just sat in here until my Gudra ran out of HP, 
and then I can go into uh, something to, to threaten out the Celebi. Uh, I'm going to go into Victini though, because I do have the option to do a little bit more damage with this Victini. And um, if he's just packing Dual Stab, I do resist both of those, of course. Um, so I do take a little bit of Psychic Damage, and I do also take Rocks, so not ideal, I'm already at 56%. But I can now threaten him with U-Turn, because he's no longer packing the Tanga Berry. And uh, that is going to force his switch out, and uh, I'm expecting either the Arcanine or the Blastoise, as I mentioned before. And he does go into the Arcanine, and uh, he's also going to show his item here. He's going to show the Rocky Helmet, so that makes a lot of sense to deal with uh, precisely this situation of a teeny that's going for a U-turn. Um, and I'm going to go into my Blastoise. Uh, the reason I do this is obviously because I want to spin, and um, you know he can't really threaten me too much with any of his moves. So I guess he could go for Wild Charge, um, but I should be able to live that. Um, and it actually turns out that I'm faster than his Arcanine, which is cool. You know, it gives me more information. You know, he's definitely zero speed, um, and uh, he does Toxic me. So he's got Toxic. It's unlikely in this situation then that he has Will O Wisp, because he wants to have Morning Sun. He's got Toxic. Um, he's probably going to want something like Crunch in order to hit Victini. And so unless he's got, like, his only other options in his last slot are, like, Wild Charge, Close Combat, and Flare Blitz. And Flare Blitz obviously makes the most sense. It allows him to hit Lando the hardest and uh, stuff like that. It gives him super effective moves to hit a Weavile, which this is a good response to. Um, so no will o -Wisp most likely. Um, so I'm going to then go into my Weavile as he now doubles into Blastoise. Um, I wasn't expecting his Blastoise versus my Blastoise, I was expecting his Celebi. Um, so Weavile made a lot of sense in that situation. Um, but, uh, you know, a good play for him uh, to go into his Blastoise for sure. Um, so again, I don't have anything that really handles this Blastoise right now. Um, I do have my own Blastoise with Toxic, so if I can just weaken it, um, you know, with the Toxic, I can potentially set up my late game Weavile Sweep. But I'm going to double on out into my Gudra, because, uh, again, Gudra doesn't really do anything. I just need to get this in. I'd like to pretty much let it die, and then I can bring in something that can actually threaten this Blastoise. Um, which is not much. Like, basically, it's just potentially bluffing an electric move on my Victini. Uh, I don't have any super effective coverage on this team for Blastoise, which is, you know, a kind of poor decision in team building, in hindsight. Um, but it is what it is. Um, Outrage doesn't even do that much damage to the Blastoise. It does 16%. Um, it's going to do, like, 24% to the Celebi. So you guys can see, like, if I hadn't... Um, if I hadn't uh, gotten burned, I could potentially like nearly two shot this this Celebi. Celebi can't touch my my Gudra as far as I can tell. Um, I'm expecting most likely his recover here, so I do go into my Weavile. He goes for rocks, which is you know not great because I have to spin them again, but it does put me in a position where pursuit is guaranteed to kill even if he stays in. And I already know he's not Culberberry because he already showed Tangaberry. So that's very nice for me. So now I have my Blastoise, uh, or his Blastoise coming in. I'm just going to sack my Gudra. Because, yeah, as I've mentioned, it's pretty worthless at the moment. Um, and this is going to give me the chance to go into my own Blastoise uh, and do two things. First, I want to try and spin these hazards away. And second, I want to toxic this Blastoise. Because uh, as soon as I start whittling this thing down, the better position my Weavile is going to be in. At this point, it's looking like Weavile is definitely my chance to win. Um, as long as I get up rocks and get some chip damage on the Arcanine. You know, when you show him that the Arcanine is my, his response to Victini. So Victini should be able to wear that down uh, pretty quickly. So I land the Toxic, which is very nice. And the worst case scenario happens. He has Rest. And on the last turn, like when he went for Scald versus my Blastoise, I was starting to get a little worried. Like, you know, to me, why didn't he click uh, Aura Sphere or Dark Pulse or something like that just to get a little bit extra damage? Um, it's because he's Rest Talk with Scald and Rapid Spin. Um, so not very good for me. My original plan of just wearing this down with Toxic is no longer going to work. And in fact, there's only one Pokemon on my team that can even three-shot this, and that is Landorus T with Earthquake. So I have to somehow get into my Lando T versus the Blastoise as it clicks Rest. And then that gives me 
you know, basically three turns where I can click Earthquake versus it, you know, and that's conditional on um, him not pulling Scald with his Sleep Talk. If he pulls Scald and hits my Lando, it's going to do tremendous damage. I could probably survive one because this doesn't seem to be an offensive Blastoise. But I definitely can't survive two, and if he gets a burn on my Lando, I'm done. Like, there's nothing else I can do to beat this Blastoise in this game. Um, for I go into Weavile. This is actually a misclick. <laughs> um, considering that his Blastoise seems to be built to deal with my Weavile, like, there wasn't a good reason for me to go into it. Uh, I just literally misclicked. Um, I was, like, hovering over Weavile to figure out, you know, what moves it had just to remind myself, and uh, I clicked on it on accident. Um, but he, you know, I guess kind of luckily for me, he goes into his Arcanine as I click knockoff. Because I'm in this position, I'm like, what else am I supposed to do? I don't know. Um, I do 43%, which is not a bad amount of damage. Uh, I do take some Rocky Helmet Recoil, which is not ideal. But the fact that it takes 43 from knockoff tells me that this is probably a Spadef Arcanine. Um, which is, you know, like, pretty much the best Victini check in the game. Like, Intimidate plus uh, Spadef Spread just handles almost any variant of Victini. So... Nice on his end, and uh, as I mentioned before, I don't think that this Mon has uh, Will-O-Wisp, so me going into Lando is very free here. And um, he's going to make a double of his own, actually, and he is going to go into, uh, I think, Zapdos? No, he goes into Blastoise. Um, so this makes a lot of sense, you know, because he wants to, he went to Arcanine to get off the Intimidate on my Weavile, and then he can go back into Blastoise, which is his hard counter. Um, so it definitely makes sense. Um, I wish I had clicked rocks here. That would have... Or no, I, I on this... Sorry, there's a turn later where I wish I clicked rocks, but it's not this turn. Uh, here, facing down this Blastoise, I've got no answer. So I do... Uh, I think I double into Victini. I'm not sure what I do. Um, I go for Earthquake. Okay, sorry. So let me go back and... Uh, let me go back and say this again. So... I mentioned before that Lando is the only thing on my team that can even three-shot this Blastoise. So I'm very motivated to click Earthquake versus this thing. Um, that's the only way I'm going to be able to weaken it so that Weavile can clean up the rest of the team. Um, so I do click Earthquake here, and he you know, correctly reads that, and he goes right on into his uh, Zapdos. So nice play on his end, for sure. Um, and, you know, the fact that he's bringing this in, you know, th this shows that it's his Lando check. Um, so now I have two suspicions. One, you know, this Zapdos might be Charty Berry, which means that I can't one-shot it with Stone Edge. Uh, well, I don't one-shot a defensive spread. But um, my other suspicion is that he's offensive. Um, it, you know, definitely could be possible. If he's offensive, then my Stone Edge does one-shot, as long as he's not packing Charty Berry. But I'm starting to think that both of those things are true. Uh, just uh, based on the way that he's using the Zapdos right now. Uh, so I'm going to go into my Steelix. And uh, we're going to see what this Zapdos does. Um, he does stay in. So we don't necessarily know if he's faster than us or not. But the hidden power ice damage that he gives off there does suggest that this is an offensive Zapdos. At least in terms of its special attack investment. Um, so um, if he's uh, max special attack there's a good chance that he's running a lot of speed too um i go for dragon tail because i am expecting his switch out and it'd just be nice even without rocks up to get a little chip on something and then to bring in a different mon that uh doesn't have as good of a matchup he brings in his blastoise which is the best mon that he has to match up with my steelix and i do miss um so this is just a little frustrating um because now not only do i miss out on the chip damage but now i'm in a position where i have to sack a mon um, and that's not good. I don't want Steelix to be that Mon because it still, still handles uh, Zapdos and Weavile pretty well. I even think he could tank one hit from Arcanine or Nidoqueen if needed. And obviously hit those Mons back with super effective stab. Um, unfortunately, it's looking like the weakest link on my team right now is Victini. So I do sack that. And um, he's still at 70%. So... Um, I'm going to go into my Lando on this next play, and I do some calcs, and I'm thinking that the combination of Stone Edge plus EQ has a really good shot at killing this Blastoise, and obviously that's beneficial to me because it gives me the option to hit the incoming Zapdos, and uh, that's exactly what he does. He goes into Zapdos, and I click the Stone Edge, 
and um, it does uh, reveal to have Charty Berry and does 47%. So 47% tells me this is definitely offensive. I'm not sure how much uh, bulk investment this thing has at all. Um, if he, So I'm going to pivot out into Steelix here, and if he stays in, that's telling me that he's probably faster than me because he's not fearing the second stone edge. Um, like even, you know, just based on that damage, I'm already pretty positive that he's faster than me. Um, I do have the Yachi Berry in my Lando, so I can potentially survive the HP Ice. But, you know, I'm still hoping that you know, maybe there's a situation where I can keep Lando at a decent amount of health. Uh, it's not looking like to be the case, though. I double into my Lando on his, uh, uh, you know, because I'm hoping maybe he would go into Blastoise. And then again, I can go for uh, a, a, co a combination of moves to potentially 2 at KO the Blastoise. But he pretty wisely stays in and goes for Roost. And now the Zapdos is at full HP. Maybe I should have just stayed in with uh, Steelix. I, I don't really know. It's hard to say. Um, but if this, at this point, I'm going to have to take the HP Ice. And I'm just hoping that my Stone Edge... Um, it, you know, I don't know what the rolls are like. You know, If I need a high roll or just a mid roll in order to one-shot him. I don't, I don't know. Um, but I'm thinking that the only play that I can reasonably make here is to uh, go for Stone Edge and hope for the kill. Um, he goes for the HP Ice, uh, he gets a crit, which uh, rubs salt in the wound, but I don't think it matters. Um, and I go for Stone Edge and I miss. So um, whether I was gonna get the good roll or not, it didn't matter. I was um, I was not meant to hit that move. So my Lando is dead for basically nothing. I can go into my Weavile and I can click Icicle Crash here and um, potentially kill the Zapdos, which is exactly what happens. And the reason that he sacks it off is that he doesn't need Zapdos anymore. Um, he can just now go right into his Blastoise, and he should be able to clean up the game. Uh, the only way that he can't clean up the game is if I get a couple of Icicle Crash flinches in a row, maybe I get a crit, and then like I get a crit on uh, low kick or something like that. So I go for the Icicle Crash, hoping to get that first flinch, and uh, no, we don't even get the chance. We we miss our Icicle Crash. So um, he's going to go for Scald and he's going to burn us. So it's just like, <laughs> you know, none of these little, you know, a lot of these little pieces of hacks at the end don't really matter. Um, like I was going to lose no matter what. Um, but, you know, it just it never makes you feel good. But uh, I don't hold that against Vepsis at all. I definitely want to say GG to Vepsis. Uh, he really out prepped me here. The Rest Talk Blastoise was. Uh, it was spectacular, and it's funny because I almost brought the same. Uh, I almost brought the same Blastoise set. Um, it wouldn't have worked as well versus him as it did versus me because he had an offensive Zapdos, and uh, that would have really put a damper in my plan. And he had the Celebi as well. Although I think I learned afterwards that the Celebi had HP Ice instead of Giga Drain, so Blastoise with Rest Talk could have potentially. Uh, it wouldn't, I'm not gonna say it could have walled Celebi, but it could have. You know, it could have. Uh, survived um so big shout outs to him for for uh, for the way that he approached this game and um you know there i mean the there are a few of the turns where the hacks were really unfortunate like gudra getting burned immediately really stunk um missing the stone edge obviously stunk uh things like that but it's it's the game um, and I'm not really confident in saying that the outcome would have changed had those things not happened. I still had no way of dealing with this Blastoise set. So, uh, I don't think it would have really, uh, really won me the game or anything. So, that is the end of my UBC season. Uh, I do want to give a big shout out to Adam for hosting once again. And I want to give a big thank you to everyone who helped me team build and gave me bonk battles throughout the season. Um, it's hard to name everybody, but, you know, I know I got mocks from people like Turkey, I got a lot of team building help from, uh, Darth Vader, from Papa Boy, from, uh, Johnny O, and a bunch of people like that, um, and just a lot of people like, you know, uh, Greg, you know, big thanks to Greg for, for all of his help, um, and helping me find mocks and stuff like that, and a big thanks to Kelly Under the Radar for, also helping me brainstorm and team build and stuff like that. Uh, he's become a very good friend of mine in the last couple months, and I'm really grateful for that. Um, I don't know precisely when I'm going to be doing another league. 
uh, UBC season six, it's not clear when it's going to be starting. It might be in January. It might be in like May. Uh, we're just going to have to see how it shakes out. Um, one way or another, I'll probably be doing some sort of content league wise come January. Um, but I'm not 100% positive on that. I'm, uh, I'm happy to take a, a little bit of a break from competitive mons. Ultra Sun and Moon just came out yesterday, and so I've been enjoying that. And um, I've also been enjoying Duel Links a lot. If you guys have been paying attention to my channel, you'll notice that I've been putting out probably two videos a week on Duel Links, and I will continue that, especially because uh, the Steam release just came out, so it's even easier for me to record. I no longer have to record from my cell phone. So you can expect some Duel Links content for sure, and uh, there might not be any immediate Pokemon content over the next two months or so, uh, but I should be coming back in one, one way uh, or another uh, in about two months or so. Anyway, uh, I of course want to finish by thanking you guys and uh, supporting me throughout the season for, for w watching the videos, for leaving likes and everything. If you want to see more Pokemon content from me, definitely leave a comment down below and uh, let me know that you do want to see it and uh, tell me what exactly it is that you'd like to see and um, if there's if there's good interest I'll definitely make something uh, that that you guys will enjoy so that's gonna do it for me I will sign off now make sure you check back to the channel for other gaming content until the next time I'll see you guys later